it's starting to get crowded in here. It's the Aurora Light. It's a 50 watt fiber laser just released by Thunder Laser. It's going to be sitting around in the shop for the next few months. But today, I'm going to take you through the highlights of the installation. I hope you'll stick around here on LaserNug. I'm going to put a link down below in the description of this video that'll take you to an installation video put out by Thunder Laser on how to install the Aurora Light and how to set it up. But I wanted to mention a few things that I found along the way, just to help you out. The overall install was just as simple as they demonstrate in the video. Literally, it was that simple. A couple of things I wanted to mention. Make sure you don't forget to remove that lens cap. On either side panel door, when you open the door, you're going to find that there are locking screws, which I believe lock your up and down Z-axis movement into place. You need to make sure you remove both those bolts, one on either side. There are two 10-foot exhaust pipes and an exhaust fan included in the purchase with this Aurora Light. Everything you need is right there, including your brackets. You'll notice when I put it in, I put it in on an angle. I didn't make it look all nice and pretty horizontal or vertically because anytime you're running any type of venting, you want to make sure that you minimize the number of 90 degree turns in the piping. So what I've done is I've angled it so that it goes straight or as straight as possible to my outside vent. And of course comes down on an angle and minimizes the 90 that has to go to the machine itself. That way I know I'm going to get maximum CFM out of that exhaust fan. When you set the Aurora light in place, you'll notice I did not back it all the way to the wall. I left room for my exhaust pipe, but most importantly, there are cooling vents on the very back of the machine. So you don't want to push the machine right up against the wall. You need to give it some room for those cooling fans to do their job and to be able to ventilate. If you're planning on building your own cabinet to support it, from the bottom of the feet to the top of your workspace is exactly four inches. I wanted to get mine level with my workbench. I missed it by that much. <laughs> when you unpack the unit, this emergency button is going to be depressed. You need to push in, turn clockwise, and let it pop out. Otherwise, you won't be able to run the machine. It's recommended like with many other different types of equipment that you have the proper fire extinguisher close by, you'll need a CO2 fire extinguisher, not a multi-purpose or type AB or type ABC, a CO2. You may want to pick up a pair of laser safety glasses. However, it's not the same as the glasses you're probably using for your bolt or perhaps if you have another type of laser, because each of these different types of lasers produce different wavelengths. So you're going to need to make sure you get the right pair of glasses to match the wavelength of the fiber laser because it's not the same as your bolt or any other COT laser. A few notables. You're going to get a big yellow bag. It's going to have a lot of stuff in there. Uh, a couple of tools. In fact, probably any tools, number of hex tools, screwdriver, a number of other components, including some important stuff such as the keys for the unit as well as for the doors. One of the differences that the Aurora Light provides over some of the other Aurora models is that it does not have an autofocus. It's a manual focus. So your focus stick will come and you'll notice it even has my serial number on there. So it's been tested. You're absolutely going to need your thumb drive and you want to keep that somewhere safe, similar to the Bolt. Because we're using a Macintosh computer, you may want to get yourself an adapter or a dongle so that you can use that thumb drive plug it into your USB-C port. Speaking of the USB-C, you're going to get a printer cable or a printer light cable that comes with the machine and it also has an older style USB on it. I just did the same thing I did with the bolt. I went out got the same 10 foot cord but instead of having the old USB it's got a USB-C end so I don't need to use an adapter or a dongle. I can just plug it directly into my Mac. I was really pleasantly surprised in addition to some of the other tools and things that you're provided, they've actually included a couple of guides for your work surface, as well as the M6 screws required to screw them down. I wasn't sure where I was going to pick these up, but these are going to be very helpful in trying to manage or position pieces on that workbench. They were also kind enough to include a few anodized aluminum business cards, I guess so we could test out our first run. Let's take a minute to familiarize ourselves with the machine. On the front panel, to your left, you've got an emergency stop button. In the event you need it, 
You just press it in, stops the machine instantly. In order to reset it, you simply grab it, turn it to the right, let it pop out. The key to turn the unit on, you have an on button here, a lamp button. There are several different levels of illumination, including off. This is to manually turn your fan on. So far, you don't need to do that. Once you've loaded the device into light burn and you run a job, the unit will automatically turn the exhaust fan on after a small delay. But if you, for whatever reason, need to turn it on manually, you can do it with this button here. This is your up and down for your Z axis. That allows you to focus in on whatever material or thickness of material you have. These two buttons, which are standard on all Aurora models, do not work on the Aurora light with one very important exception on this top button. And this is your start button. This is the button you can start a job after you framed it. And in the event that you've got a repetitive job, you simply remove one piece of material, put the other one in, press start again, it'll run the same job. Done, take it out, put the next in, push it, it'll run the job again. Right here from the machine, or you can run it from Lightburn. When you're starting the machine, you want to make sure it's plugged into your computer and Lightburn is turned on. You're going to simply turn the key. You'll see here that the on light is flashing red. In order to fully engage or initialize the machine, you have to press the on button. And now you'll see it's turned to a solid red and you can hear the fan kick on. Now it's ready to accept jobs or to run jobs. On the left and the right side of the machine, you'll see an LED light. When it shines green, that means it's safe to put your hands in the laser. In other words, the laser's not operating. That's when you're setting up your piece and getting ready to set and run your job. As soon as you press start, this light will change to red and it'll stay red until the job's finished, at which point the light will change to green again. If you need to engrave or mark a long piece, you're gonna to need to disable the door locks. In order to do so, you're gonna press the on button, hold it in, and you're gonna press this top button here, hold it in for about five to six seconds. You'll know it's disabled because your start button flashes and the two lights on the side will flash red. That allows you to place your piece in, line it up, focus it, and then you can run your job with the door not fully closed. When you've completed that engrave, you can re-engage the door safety switches by once again, press and hold your on, press and hold this button here, about five to six seconds, and you'll see that your lights on the side of the unit will turn green again. That means that your safety switches for the door are now re-engaged. On both the left and right side of the safety door, you'll see these panels with four hex screws. These are pass-through doors. So if you've got a smaller or a thinner piece, and you'd rather make sure that your protection is all the way down, you can just undo these four screws on each door, take the door out. You're still going to need to disable the safety switch, but now you can run your piece with the door fully closed. The Aurora light has a manual focus, and in fact, there are two ways to focus. You have your focus tool, which came in your yellow package and has a magnetic back so you can keep it stored on the side, or you can use these two LEDs, which can be turned on or off with this switch in the middle. And you can use these two LEDs to focus. Let's take a look. If your focus LEDs have been turned on, you'll see there are two dots on your workspace. Place your material and you use the up and down arrow keys for your Z axis and you want to try to bring those two dots together as one. Once they've converged, you should be in focus to be able to run your job. You can also use the manual focus tool, hang it here and behind the lens, and test it. And if you're in focus, the length of your focus tool should touch your material. If you find for whatever reason that you've brought your two focus dots together and you hang your tool and the tool appears to be either short or too long, then that means that something's out of focus. I'm going to put a link to a video from Thunder Laser USA down below in the description in the event that you find that. 
And Chris will take you through how to refocus or to make sure that you've got maximum or the best focus on your lens and on your material and how to adjust the focus tool. The Aurora light can also cut some very thin pieces of material or metals. If you are going to do any cutting, I'd offer that you want to get yourself a piece of quarter inch plywood, something flat and sturdy that you can place on your workspace so that while you're cutting through that metal, you're not also hitting the tabletop of your workspace on the Aurora light. You've got something underneath it to accept it. So you're not marring or damaging the surface of the Aurora light. So I think that provides you with all of the tips or the things that I've learned putting it in myself and that more or less ends the physical part of the installation. On my next video, which I promise I'll release in just a few days, we're going to connect it up to the Apple computer. We're going to load this device and the respective files from the thumb drive into Lightburn and then we're going to get us up and running to do our first job. I hope you're going to stick around for that video because although you can follow that installation video to get your device into Lightburn, there's a number of other settings or parameters that I'm going to show you you need to change. Otherwise, what you see here on the screen is not going to look necessarily the same as what you're going to see on the bed of the laser. So with that, I wanted to send out a special thanks to Thunder Laser for sending it out for me to take for a test drive. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to each other, and I hope to see you again on the next video. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.